let's talk about a professional visa for Ecuador. As I mentioned, there's many types of visas for Ecuador. There's the Rentista visa, which if you've got a steady income stream that you can document for two years, such as a work contract or rental agreement, you can use that. I think it's a non-starter for digital nomads because who has a two-year work contract? That's like a rarity. So it's, it's not practical. Uh, there's an investment visa, which you can use, but why would you want to tie your money up into a country if you don't need to? So that's where the professional visa comes in, which the only requirement for a professional visa is that you have a four-year better college degree. A two-year college degree may work, but a four-year is better. So if you have worked hard, ah, thank and achieve that four-year degree, then you can uh, get a professional visa through Ecuador. Uh, I'm going to out, lay out the steps that you need to do to uh, get the degree registered, which is step no, which is the first part of the process is to get the degree registered, and I'll lay out all the steps for that. So the primary task of getting your degree registered is for you at least is collecting all the documents you need, basically from each university you've attended. So if you did a community college, you need to go get their documents too. If you did a couple degrees and merged them all into one, you need to get from every university that you've attended, basically two or three things. One is the transcript. And that transcript must be notarized and apostilled. So I'll repeat that word again and define it in a second. If you got a degree from that university, like your uh, associate's degree, Get that degree, get an artist, get a positive. And you also need this weird Ecuadorian thing called a mode of education letter. That letter lays out what semesters and the dates of the semesters or quarters, depending on your university, that you attended that particular college or university and that you attended in person. So the dates for each semester quarter that you attended in person, listing them all out. You need that. Again, that needs to be notarized. Your, your university or college probably won't know what the heck that is. Uh, you need to give them samples and you can Google to get samples. Also, all these documents I've defined out on a blog post that I'll include in the description on a blog that I started to write this stuff down because one of my buddies said, hey, you should write this stuff down. So I did. So you need those items from each one of the universities or college that you've attended. Now, the other thing that you need to do is, unless you're really good at translating Spanish, working on Spanish online and dealing with Ecuadorian government agencies, you probably want to hire a facilitator or a lawyer down there. There are non-lawyers that do this and there are lawyers that do this. I hired a lawyer. I include the name of the person I hired in the list that I used to register my college degree. She got the job done. Uh, so the process was get all these documents, your mode of education letter, your diploma, and your transcript, and you need to get them from the university. They need to be notarized, most likely notarized. The, the details of um, getting a document apostilled varies per state. So let's stop here and describe what am I talking about with that weird word that I'm most likely mispronouncing, by the way that in the blog entry that I have, I made sure I spelled correctly, but it's called apostilled. I keep calling it apostle, but it's apostilled. And that is basically an international notary. If you're getting documents in the United States, sorry, I don't know about Canada or other countries, I just know about the US. If you're getting documents in the US, documents that are issued by a state or within a state need to be apostilled in that state. And the only person who does that in the state is the Secretary of State. So the procedure usually goes something like this. You go to your college or university, you get this, those three documents, mode, mode of education, transcript and diploma, get them notarized, that's usually a requirement, and you get in those documents and then you take them to the Secretary of State, mail them, take them in person, whatever, pay the Secretary of State money, say, I need these apostilled, They'll actually know what you're talking about. There's usually a form to fill out, so I suggest Googling them there, the, the state you're in and getting the information off the state's website. In Oregon, it was extremely easy, actually. You get an easy form to fill out, you mail the documents in, you can even put a return um, 
uh, a return a FedEx receipt in there and they'll FedEx them back to you. Um, in Illinois, where I had to work with, a similar process, send a form. It just takes longer because, well, it's the state of Illinois. Uh, so you send it off to Chicago, you wait a month, you get it back. Uh, so it's not hard. You just pay money, fill out forms, and wait. And it's not even a lot of money. Now, I will caution you one thing. Like, uh, the lawyer that I had was very friendly, offered to have all these done for me. And she charged something like a uh, hundred bucks a document or something like that, apostilled. Secretary of State usually charges two or four bucks for the document. So this part you may want to do yourself. It's probably easier for you to do it from within the states too than doing it from Ecuador. So you get all those documents back and you contact your facilitator or lawyer and say, hey, here are the scans, the documents I just got back. What do you think? Do they look good to you? Do this before you pay to mail it to them. Hopefully, they know their business. Mine certainly did. And said, yep, that looks good. Or no, that doesn't look good. And get this changed. Unfortunately, I had to make a change in one of the mode of education letters. You get that back. If it looks good, then you can take it with you when you go to Ecuador. My advice is get all this done before you come down here. And just... FedEx it off to Ecuador. Then let the facilitator lawyer take over because all these documents need to be translated into Spanish and that's not going to be me. So uh, she trans I'm sure she farmed out translating. She's a lawyer. Uh, farmed out the translation of the documents then worked with the agency in Ecuador that registers these diplomas. Now, this is where the facilitator comes in handy because we're getting a bickering match between Ecuador and my university about who's not communicating with who because they will go to validate this information. So this is where it really pays off having someone local who can work with the agency and smooth over these rough spots, push, push it through, which I was like, I had a good lawyer. And again, I, I'll put her name in the blog and she got this all done. Now, once you get the degree registered, boom, that's all you have to do. It's registered. You have a degree registered. Yay, it's good for life. Now you can actually start on the visa process. So there's a bunch of other documents you need to actually now start the visa process because up until now getting the degree registered really isn't part of the visa process. That's a whole separate process. You wanna get that done, get it out of the way before you come down to Ecuador. Uh, you don't have to, I'm just my suggestion. And I think we'll do it as a separate video uh, we'll tack on the rest of the process you, that you have to do before you go down to Ecuador to get ready to apply for your professional visa. First step is get your degree registered, which is what we're talking about now. Then after that, then in Ecuador, you can apply for your visa. We'll talk about that in another video. Again, I'm going to put a link to the blog post that I've, I have this information on. So you can actually read it, look up words and instead of trying to figure out what, what they really are from my mispronunciation of them. I hope you find this useful and um, hope to see you down here on the road somewhere. Take care. Bye.